I have helped countless people get started in this sport, and so many people ask me, what's a good budget build? And I would be the first one to tell you that I don't really build expensive things, and if I had all the money to build whatever I wanted, I wouldn't change what I build. So the first thing I'm going to say is that don't buy cheap crap off Banggood or some random other site. It will not last. You'll have to buy it again, and it's going to cost more if you have to buy it a second time. So just don't buy cheap crap. Ask somebody that's in the sport that knows a little bit about what they're doing and ask them for their recommendations. That's going to be the best way to go. That being said, I'm going to make an effort to give you a pretty good cost-effective build that will be repairable and will last you a while. So if you're new to the sport, this is not how you're going to start. You are not going to start with one of these things. I'm sorry. I know it looks fun. I know it looks cool. It's just not going to happen. You're going to start with one of these things. This is a USB cable. And you're not even going to have to spend the $230 for this controller. You can buy the $60 Evolution controller. I'm going to link everything in the, the description below so you have access to all this stuff. But the Evolution controller is $70 or something, and it works with the USB cable to play all the simulators. And once you play Hot Props or DRL or whatever simulator you like for one hour a day, for two weeks solid, then you can consider picking up one of these guys and flying them. And the first thing I would recommend is a 4-inch, not a 3-inch, not a 2-inch, not a tiny whoop, not a 5-inch, not a 6-inch, a 4-inch. And I say that because 4-inch quads are generally much more difficult to break, and they have very good performance, sort of similar to a 5-inch, but they're a little bit more forgiving because the throttle is not as harsh, yet they can go very fast. I think a 4-inch is the easiest, easiest to fly. All right, so once you've done that, you haven't bought a $230 pair uh, controller, you've bought a $70 controller, which is pretty much as good as the $230 controller. And you're not gonna buy a $400 pair of goggles, probably not, although I would recommend you just pick up a pair of fat trucks because it's really gonna save you time and money. But if you're not gonna spend the $400 for this, uh, I'm gonna show you. I would recommend this other pair of goggles, which I actually found at Sergio's shop randomly and gave it a shot. They're, they're surprisingly good. Once you've gotten that down, the next thing you're going to do is uh, have your component list, your component selection. So none of these quads are more than $300, not a single one. And what I would recommend to anybody, the beginner or the professional, would be a sub $250 quad. It's not, these are not like super crazy things. And the difference between a $170 quad and a $220 quad is extreme. You're going to get something that's really useful out of the $230 quad, and you're going to get something that's crap that's going to break out of the $170 one. So just don't do that. Let's start with the batteries. <clears throat> you're not going to be spending 30 bucks on a battery. It's just not going to happen. You're new. You're going to break them. It's not worth the money. It's not worth the time. You can't take advantage of them because you're not good enough to take advantage of them. So you're going to spend money on the cheapest 4S pack you can find. That is perfectly fine. I agree with that. And if you think you're good enough, I would say go with a little bit better 4S. I actually recommend the Hobby King Multi-Star Green Packs, the lower C4S ones. They're, I think they're like $15, $16. And they're, they actually perform pretty well, and they're cheap. So if you break them, it's not a big deal. <clears throat> the next thing you're going to go for is your core components, which is going to be your flight controller and the power distribution and all that jazz. So for the cheap build or the budget-friendly build, I would recommend you just go with a standard power distribution board. This is the regular Matek 5 volt, 12 volt. That's, I think, $5. And then go with not this all-in-one. This one actually has my Hyperlite F4 board in it, which is just a Revo board, but it's reconfigured to just work better. And it's $26, so, or $26 or $27, so that's good. And if you have issues with every, anything, then you could just swap them out, swap out the board. It's not really a big deal. If you get something like an all-in-one everything, or this all in one really everything with ESCs. And if you like bad, do a bad job soldering something, like you're screwed, the whole board is gone. So go with independent components for now and it's gonna save you in the long run. After that, you've got your power distribution and you've got your flight control, that's already most of it. You're gonna add your ESCs. These are my favorite ESCs right now, SpeedX 20 amp ESCs. They're nine bucks, $9. I'm telling you, this is what I run. These are competitive ESCs that are the lightest and they perform fantastic for $9. Why spend more? If you want to go to the KISS, that's fine. But if you're new and you're looking for a budget-friendly build, you're not going to spend $25 on an ESC. 
nine dollars you're gonna bust them up you're gonna break them they're easy to work on easy to replace cheap to work on it's great just go with it it's the best performing ese that i've used yet in the sky or whatever it doesn't really make a difference after that, you're going to go with motors. So this is a motor bell from an RCX motor. I used to run RCX pretty much exclusively. RCX pretty much sells motors for wholesale. Their motors are definitely not the best motors, but they're pretty damn good. And they also sell them for, I think, 9 or $10. You just can't beat that. 9 or $10, that's like the wholesale price on motors typically. So if you want cost-effective, go with the RCX motor. If you're looking for actual performance and you just want to spend a little bit more, uh, the, the, by a little bit more, I mean like twice the price because these motors here, these are, I think, $21 a piece. And uh, these are also really good motors because you can buy the bell separately. So usually when you crash, you bang up the bell. You don't bang up the base of the motor. So that's a nice cost-effective way to go because the bell is only, I think, $6 or $7. So you're looking at an RCX motor for 9 or $10. You're looking at another motor for... 20 or 21 dollars and both of them you can buy separate bells for the bells for this are like four or five dollars bells for this are like six seven dollars so after that it's going to be your fpv cam which is probably going to be a regular hs 1177 which is a sony 600 ccd camera unless you go with a widescreen version of goggles which i have also recommended in which case i would recommend the monster camera the monster camera i think is 35 dollars, and the sony 600 camera hs 1177 is also about 35 dollars, i think so you're not going to go with any other camera because there are no other options the eagle camera has latency to it there's just really nothing else or the swift camera basically your options are monster for 16.9 hs 1177 or the aero v2 and the swift camera of those three if you're, you have a 69 camp, 69 monitor, go with the Monster. If you have anything else, I would say go with the Arrow because it has an OSD built into it. After that, you got your VTX, which is going to be anywhere from $15 to $30. And do not spend more than $30. In fact, there's a, a new one that just came out that's super tiny and it's like $13. That's great. And you're done. You just add your frame. And the frame... All right, the frame is a little bit of a touchy topic because I do design all my own frames. So I would recommend my own frame over any other frame. And that's because the way I've designed all my frames is that you can replace every component pretty simply. The, basically, the middle pieces, they don't break. And if you break an arm, you can replace on this new version that I have, you can replace the arm, both arms, the whole front arm system with one screw. So you take out one screw and the arm slips out. So I've designed it such that you can bust up your arms, scrap, scrape them up, scratch them up, don't worry about it. You can just replace the arm, and it's not that expensive to replace it. I think it's like 10 bucks or $11 or something for an arm. And, um, yeah, it just makes sense. But the frame is like $50, so, I mean, it is kind of a medium-priced frame, even though it's worth it. You can go with a cheaper frame. Go on Banggood and pick up a $20, $25 frame. That's fine. I don't have any issues with that. But for the most part, you should expect to replace it. And I'd go with a four millimeter frame, not a three millimeter frame. If you're new, definitely go with a four millimeter frame. Then you got your antennas, choose whatever antenna you want. Anything you like, they all break, doesn't matter. So that's it, you've got your whole build. And that's what I build too. <laughs> the only difference between that build and this build here, which is my favorite one right now, is that in here I have a $30 OSD board. And the OSD board's really nice, I really like it, but it's 30 bucks, and it's basically 30 bucks added to the cost of the whole thing. On top of that, I have the upgraded motors, which are an extra 40 bucks total. So, there you have it. The budget and the performance build. It's the same build, <laughs> just minor differences. Might as well make the package complete and talk about the charger too. So, your charger is actually very important, and I understand that you don't want to spend 160 bucks on this charger, which is... The best charger I have found still because it has four charge lanes and you can charge four batteries at the same time at four or five amps a piece and it's got no issues and it has the ACDC regulator built into it so you don't need a external power source. Definitely the best charger. CQ3 if you want to buy a charger, a real charger, this is my opinion, the best charger I have found yet. Uh, if you don't want to go with that route, I would recommend buying a small field charger like this. This is a... Uh, I think it's a $40 charger or something. They have like a $50 version that does, I don't know, 400, 300 watts or something. But if you want to charge multiple batteries, you have to use a balance board. And I would 
strongly recommend you watch plenty of YouTube videos on how to balance charge and just basically making sure everything is correct because you will run into problems if you if you don't know what you're doing. So it's a little bit less safe, maybe, maybe it's a little safer. It depends if you know what you're doing. If you know what you're doing, it's safer. If you don't know what you're doing, it's much less safe. But anyways, if you go with this charger, you can use it in the field also. So you don't have to spend money twice. You can buy this charger and then when you're ready to upgrade or you need to charge more batteries quicker, you can go with the bigger charger. So that's the best way to go. But with this charger, you will need to have an external power source. So you'll have to use either a laptop power supply or something and hack the port on the, on the power supply to make it an XT60 port or some external lap, uh, computer supplier or something that you'll probably have lying around the house, an old charger of something of some sort. Make sure it's at least like 50 watts and then plug it in and you can charge as fast as that thing will provide power to you, which is not bad. That's how I started for the first six or seven months.